Hello everyone. We want to welcome you to our webinar today. We are excited to have Tracy Brugetsker from Inovia Consulting with us. And Tracy will be presenting on Dynamic SNAV Positive Pay. And before I pass it over to Tracy to cover on this topic, I would like to remind you that the session is being recorded and it will be posted to our on-demand webinar library for you to review and share with anyone. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to type those into the questions box and we will get them answered during our Q&A time at the end of our session. So now I'm gonna pass it on over to Tracy to kick off our presentation. Hello everyone, can everyone hear me okay, I hope? Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about positive pay and do some training on the setup and how to process a positive pay through your payment journals. A few fun facts of positive pay. It's relatively easy. Um, and it defines the flow of information and formats it to the, your bank account. Uh, it can also be automated fraud detection tool, which is nice. It's offered by the cash management department of most banks. And it is a service that matches the account number, check number, and dollar amount of each check processed. And that goes to the bank, so the bank knows what to expect when you do send out your checks and they clear through your bank account from your payee. Hopefully everyone can see my screen. The first step is what you need to do is you need to set up a data exchange definition. And data exchange definition allows you to set up fields that actually creates your text format for your positive pay. So I like doing the search bar. Um, a lot of other users go to your departments and they go through the menu folders. But as you can see here, you can also click on this folder here and it'll take you exactly where it is. And you come down and you find your data exchange types or definitions. But I'm going to continue using my search bar. So I'm going to our data exchange definitions. There are defaults that come with NAV, which is your bank data conversion services, uh, Bank of America positive pay, your Citibank positive pay are defaults that come with your NAV installation. We're going to go ahead and create a new one and it's positive pay PNC. So I'm gonna do a new one and you click new and we're gonna call this positive pay PNC one. And your file type is always gonna be a fixed text. That is so it goes into a notepad text file. The type is going to be your positive pay export. And if you show more fields, automatically you're objects populate according to your type. Let me make this a little bigger for us. So here we have our line definitions. Um, we are going to make this a detail because we're not required to have any headers or footers in your data exchange for your positive pay. So for your line definitions, that's all you need. And now we're gonna go to our column definitions. And the first one you wanna do is you make a column number and you wanna go column one, whoops, column one, and this will be your account type. And that's going to be a account number, I'm sorry, account number, which is driven from your bank and automatically populated for you. You need your data tape, which is data type, which is text, and the length of your field, you can make that 10. Your basic account numbers are 10 characters. So our second one will be our record type code. And that's also a text. And that is also going to be 10 characters. And so on. So you just keep adding your columns. Uh, of course, next you need your check number, which is also going to be a check, a text, I'm sorry. And that can be up to six digits. So we're gonna, it's gonna continue on that way. In the meantime, I'm gonna show you the actual one that I did set up yesterday. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna edit this one. So as you see, we were able to set up all of our columns. We have our check number, the amount, the check issue date. Now the check issue date is a date format and most date formats come in your month of two digits, your day two digits and your year is four digits. So with that equals eight characters, you need to make sure your length is eight characters. Um, a filler 
is any space that you need in between your columns of your check issue date or your payee name. And that also goes by your bank specifications. Uh, before you do set up deposit pay, we do suggest that you get your bank specifications so we can set it up clearly for you and abide by the specs. So the filler spacing is 50. We have our payee name, which is your vendor name. Uh, payee number two, if you need a, a attention to of a certain person, and then our record type. So after we get these columns set up, we go back up to our line definitions and we do field mapping. And what this does is the field mapping will map it to the objects that are set here to the fields of those objects within NAV that will run this in the background. So you have your account number and you come down, it's very easy, you come down, you do your field number, and right away you see that it's your account number and you choose that. And you, you populate all your columns one by one. You don't need all the columns, as you see, we don't have the filler here, because that's not necessarily an object that is tied to the mapping. So we have our amount. And once again, if you just come down here, you can see the word amount. It makes it really easy. A record type, no, I do not want to rename. <laughs> um, the record type, standard default nav comes with an O, which is optional. 99% of your banks are either I for issued or V for void. So what you want to do, you need to set up a transformation rule which will replace that O with an I. If you go to advanced, you see it's there and it is replaced. And if you want to view it, it basically gives you the code, the transformation type, it finds the value O and it replaces it with I. And you can test this. So if you put an O in here and you update, no, that didn't work. Maybe I have to capitals and update there. It replaced it with an I. So it is cap sensitive. So we're going to go ahead and close that out. So you want to make sure you have that transformation rule in place or you will receive errors. So that's the first part of getting your positive pay set up to start the process. So we're going to hit OK. And now that we have that, we'll hit OK here. The second step is your bank import and export setup. And this is, this is just lines. It's, you won't go into any type of card window in NAV. So here I added our positive pay for PNC. Your direction is very important. You want to make sure you have export positive pay. And within this field, you want to tie your data exchange definition code, which we just created. So you just use your drill down. You'll find it there. Uh, the presence, the preserved non-Latin characters is enabled automatically. And those are the only columns you need for positive pay. It's very simple, as we stated. Next, you want to go to your bank. So you go to your bank account card. And here's our positive pay PNC bank card. We're going to edit that. And what you need to do on your bank account, this is very important, under your transfer tab, you have your positive pay export code. And you choose, and this is driven from the bank import that we just set up, and you choose that. And what that does is it's going to pull all your banking information, your account number that you need on your format, text format, um, your routing number, your transit number. It's going to pull all of that from this bank account card. And that's why we tie the two together and map them. Now it's time to do a positive pay process. So we go to our payment journal. We'll use today's date. And it's just a standard payment journal. You're going to process it like any other payment journal where you're going to find a vendor that has a balance for us that we can pay. We will use London Postmaster. Payment method code is going to be check. And you don't need to fill in all of these fields. We're going to hit our bank account and we're going to pay from our bank account. So we're going to choose those, choose our positive pay. And then, of course, bank payment type is very important. You have to use computer check. So we are going to pay London Postmaster. We'll pay them $50. 
And it is an unlimited line of numbers, so you can use as many lines from the payment journal as you feel it's still fit to. Uh, now we'll pay AR, Day Property Management. Make that a check. We'll pay them $120. Make that our bank. And I hit my FA key. This is just a little because of trade. If you hit F8, I'll copy the line above. So this way it saves you from some people like using their mouse and choosing other people like their keyboard. I'm myself like using my FA key because there's a copy of the previous line to the line you're making your transaction on. So let's do one more vendor. And we will go into advanced. And we will pay them. And we will make that a check. And we're going to pay them a thousand dollars from our bank. And we'll make that a computer check. So from here, once again, it's just a standard payment journal. You want to print your checks. Just check our options. Expand our tabs. Just make sure there's no set filters. That is correct. Our general journal line, that is correct. So we're going to go ahead and print our checks. We'll just open these up. We'll get an idea what they look like. So here's our standard checks that we just printed. I'll close that out. Okay, so from here, once again, you just post your entries. Go to actions. Let's see, our posting. There it is. Post. Post. Want to post the journal lines? You say yes. And those transactions were successfully posted. So now we're going to go back to our bank account card, which we are here. And this is where you send your positive pay export. It is in the ribbon here at the listing, or if you need to go into your bank account card, if you're already present at your bank account card, you can also process it from there. So we'll process our positive pay export. And what's very important is your cut up upload date. So if you were processing checks, I'm not sure what it's 21, um, but your last upload date is very important because that is the checks and that's where it gathers it. So if we use 46, you notice that now they're gone. So you want to make sure you put in your posting date to bring those back in and you will see those. So from here, we just click on export. And we can go ahead and we'll open this up. You can get a feel. For, this is all that it looks like. This is everything we created in the data exchange definition. You have your account number, your check number, your amount, the check date, and the payee. And those are pretty much all the fields that are necessary for a bank, but some banks might require more fields and we can always include those. So you just save that to your desktop. And we'll call this positive pay 0408 and that is the file you send to your bank. A lot of banks you can just do it upload directly to their website. Some have an FTP site that you need to upload it to. But that is basically how you do positive pay. Is there any questions? Thank you, Tracy. Uh, no, none have come through as of right now. Um, if anybody does have any, please feel free to type those in and uh, Tracy can get those addressed. Or if you'd like to contact her individually or your account rep, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Tracy's got her information up there on the screen as well. Or like I said, you can contact your um, Inovia uh, account manager or rep. 
All right, well, thank you, Tracy, for presenting today and to everyone on today's webinar, or if you're watching on demand, we thank you for joining us. And we do have a few more webinars coming soon. Next week, Tuesday, we have Gino Pack from Anovia Consulting, and he's going to be presenting on user using Power Automate to supercharge Business Central. And also next week, we have John Grant and Jenny Hollingsworth back with us. And they're going to be presenting on your production orders created and processed just like that, Business Central for Manufacturing 101. This will be another one of their continued webinar series. So check out our website for more of our upcoming events, and that's anovia.com slash events. As I stated in the beginning, we will have our uh, presentation from this webinar up on our website. So just be looking for that in our uh, anovia.com slash past events. It's in our web webinar library. So you can see uh, this webinar that Tracy just uh, presented on, as well as all of our previous webinars um, that we have on our past events page in our webinar library. Innovia also has a podcast going on. If you haven't heard of it already, it's called the Innovia Conversation. And we just want to encourage you to listen to our selection that Steve Waltz and Jeff Pergolsky have provided to us over the last year. They do about two episodes a month, and you can find out about all the different podcast platforms to listen to on our podcast page, and that's novia.com slash podcast. So check out our selection and subscribe so you'll be notified when those new episodes air. All right. Well, again, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Tracy, for presenting. And we look forward to seeing you again soon on another Anovia webinar. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.